Welcome to Live Live! <laughs> so tired, I may be the one that falls asleep during the sermon today. That's where you laugh. Okay, so what we're going to talk about is where is God? And uh, there was this story I heard the other day about there was two kids. They were eight years old and ten years old, and they were boys. And they lived in this neighborhood, and, and uh, the parents were kind of at the end of the rope because it seems like everything that went down in that neighborhood that was bad, the boys had a hand in it. Maybe they weren't the only ones, but they were always involved. And the mom and dad were just at the end of the rope. So they went to the local church, they talked to the pastor, and they said, will you talk to the boys for us? We've tried and we tried, they won't listen to us. He said, sure, here's what I want. Send the youngest one in alone, and I want to talk to him first. Okay. So the mom, you know, they were, they were just a few blocks away. The mom kind of walked the boy down there and said, I want, here's someone I want to talk to. Took him to the pastor's office, set him in the chair. The mom leaves. Door shuts. The pastor goes, son, where is God? And the kid kind of, he's kind of looking around. He goes, son, listen to me. Where is God? And the kid's kind of looking around still. And finally the man, the pastor stands up and leans across his desk and said, Son, tell me, where is God? And he got up and he ran all the way back home. He went on the front door, ran up the stairs, went into his brother's room and says, We're in trouble now. He said, What happened? He goes, God's missing. They think we have something to do with it. <laughs> right? But it's, it's funny, right? It, it's funny, but sometimes, sometimes we do that. Right? Sometimes we think we're alone. And we ask that question. Where is God? Where is God in my life? Where is God in this situation? We wonder, where is God? And it's not because we think someone took Him. Just because we think He's not there. I want us to all think back at a time in our life where we've you know, maybe said that. Maybe we've said it out loud. Maybe we just thought it in our our heart, but we wondered, where is God? And what I found is, in my own life, is when we do that, when we ask that question about where is God, we reveal a lot more about our nature than about God's nature. Because if we go back and, and, and read our Bible about what God's promises to us are, the fact that we ask, where is God, means that we don't understand what that promise says or we don't believe what that promise says. So the question is, is there any place that God can't be? If you, if you have your Bible with you, you want to turn to Jeremiah 23, verses 23 through 24. I'm going to read from the New Living Translation. It says, I am a God who is... Am I a God who is only close at hand, says the Lord? No, I am far away at the same time. Think about that for a second. I'm close at hand and far away. Can anyone hide from me in a secret place? Am I not everywhere in all the heavens and all the earth, says the Lord? So when we ask ourselves and we're in this situation, we say, where is God? The answer's got to be right here, no matter where we are. And I want us to kind of agree on that simple truth. That here in Jeremiah, and, and I'll show you later, lots of other places, God said He's always going to be there. Is He at our beck and call to do what we want Him to do? No. No. That's why He's Lord and we're not. But when we get into these situations after today, I don't want our first response to be, where is God? I want it to be, God, here I am. See, we tend to underestimate God all the time. I know I do it because my feeble mind can't comprehend what He can do, right? That whole thing about, am I just close at hand? No, I'm across the street and I'm around the world at the same time. I can't do that. I don't understand it. I can't see that. How does He do it? You know, maybe you've watched the, the, uh, some movies, you know about God, and, and one of my favorite ones is where they're getting all the prayer requests in, right? And they're just going off the hook, and they've got to read all these prayer requests, and it's like, well, that's just, that's just this block, right? And, and we underestimate what our God can do. 
And we're not the only ones. Um, in 1 Kings, there's a, a story of battles between Israelites and Arameans. And uh, I know, I love, you know, that's what gets me kind of through the Old Testament is all the battles that go on, you know, because sometimes it can be a little um, hard to read. But in 1 Kings, and I'll read this to you, there, there are battles between the Israelites and the Arameans, and, and there's these two kings. And they're kind of doing what kings do. They're, they're standing off. They're um, talking big. They're talking trash to each other, right? And uh, Ben-Hadad is kind of the leader of the Arameans. And Ahab's the king. Ahab is the, the leader of the Israelites. And what had happened is Ben-Hadad had come and, and said, Hey, we're going to... We're going to wipe you out, just so you know. We're going to come back in the spring. We're going to wipe you out. And King Ahab was like, good to know. Okay. And a prophet came to King Ahab and said, here's the deal. They're going to come, but you're going to wipe them out. And so spring came. The the battle went on. Sure enough, Israelites totally massacred the Arameans. A couple people were the only people that got away, right? And and Ben-Hadad happened to be one of them. And so when they got back and they're licking their wounds and they're trying to figure out what went wrong, in 1 Kings 20, 23, here's what they said. After their defeat, Ben-Hadad's officers told, said to him, The Israelite gods are gods of the hills. That is why they won. But we can beat them on the plains, right? Here's someone looking for a job, right? Why did you lose? Well, you know, we fought them in the hills. That's the problem. They're gods up there. If we'd have fought them on the plains, we'd have won. And so back in that day, spring was kind of, it wasn't like, you know, baseball season it was it was time when kings went to war so the next spring rolled around and the following spring he called up the Aramean army and marched out against Israel this time at Aphek Israel then mustered its army set up supply lines and marched out for battle but the Israelite army looked like two little flocks of goats in comparison to the vast Aramean force that filled the countryside then the man of God went to the king of Israel and said this is what the Lord says The Arameans have said the Lord is a God of the hills and not of the plains. So I will defeat this vast army for you. Then you will know I am Lord. That brings me to one of my favorite songs right now. God of the hills and valleys. Right? Who's the guy who sings it? Torin Torin Wells. And, And the verse goes like this. You're a God of the hills and valleys. Hills and valleys, God of the hills and valleys, and I'm not alone. And I actually got a, a little behind the music that, that Torin kind of tells what, what this means to him. And I want, I want us to watch this right now. Funny because this is a song that I really didn't even intend on writing. I was just sitting there at the piano at my church and uh, just kind of playing and singing through some things. And I had this quote come to mind that said, when you are on the mountaintops of life, learn to bow low. And when you're in the valleys of life, learn to stand tall. And I thought, man, this is a perfect picture for the believer. Because a lot of times, I don't know about you, but it's true for me that when I get to the mountaintops of life, the great experiences of life, the successes of life, I can start to feel like, man, this this was me. I did this. I worked this. I climbed this mountain. But it's really in those moments that we have to learn to bow low in high places, remembering that it's God who set us there. And yet on the flip side, sometimes when I'm in the valleys of life, it's like, God, where are you? You left me here by myself. And that's not true either, because God sees us in the valleys and we're not alone. The thing for the believer is for us to understand how we deal with this tension of these mountaintop moments and these valley moments. And it's to remember this, that no matter where we're at, we're standing in God's grace. And that no matter what we have, His grace is enough. He's the God of the hills and the God of the valleys. Your God of the hills and valleys, hills and valleys, God of the hills and valleys, and I am not alone. 
So that kind of shows where his heart was. And, and, and here's the verse that he's talking about. On the mountains I will bow my life to the one who set me there. In the valley I will lift my eyes to the one who sees me there. When I'm standing on the mountain, I didn't get there on my own. When I'm walking through the valley end, no, I'm not alone. Right? What else do we need? I mean, we can boil it all down to, you know, when we talk about the heart of the believer, and yeah, there's all this other stuff about we need to go spread this gospel, but when we're talking about feeding ourselves, when we're talking about what empowers us, when we're talking about having the drummer spirit and be able to walk in with confidence and do something, we need to know that wherever we are on this spectrum, whether we're in the valley, whether we're on the mountaintop, God's there. How cool is that? I mean, to me, that's everything that gives me strength, that gives me confidence, that gives me courage to go do the things that God wants me to do. Because guess what? He won't let me fall. He won't let me fall, except when I need to. He won't let me fall. And He won't let me fail. And so, when I kind of boil down into what the Bible's saying about God's promises to us and God's omnipresence and God's just, I don't know, I just feel like one or two people here today feel like they're alone. And I feel like I'm supposed to say, you're not. Even if your church family lets you down, even if your biological family lets you down, even if your friends let you down, you're never alone. And if you feel like you're in the lowest valley you have ever been in, God is right there beside you. And what you need to remember is when that valley turns into a hill and the hill turns into a mountaintop, don't go, look what I did. Go, praise God for what you've done for me. Right? Do we need more proof in the Bible? Do we need... Do we need more? Deuteronomy 30, Deuteronomy, that's hard to say. Deuteronomy 31, 6. So be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not panic before them. For the Lord your God will personally go ahead of you. He will neither, neither fail you nor abandon you. There is no one on this earth that can make that promise to you. They can try, they can mean well, but there's no one that can make that promise to you that God can. Hebrews 13, 5, Don't love money, be satisfied with what you have, for God has said, I will never fail you, I will never abandon you. Joshua 1, 9, This is my command, be strong and courageous, do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Matthew 28, 20, this is Jesus talking. Teach new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you. And be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. First Chronicles 28, 20, then David continued, be strong and courageous and do the work. Do not be afraid or discouraged for the Lord my God, my God, is with you. He will not fail you or forsake you. Do you see a pattern? Right? I'm the type of person that maybe after the sixth or seventh time of God telling me something, I get it. Even I figured out this. God has said that He will never abandon us. And you say, well, He doesn't know what I did. Did you not hear me? He was everywhere you were. He knows exactly what you did. And He loves you anyway. He knows your heart. He knows what's in it. He gets past whatever facade you put up. And He loves you. And He's never going to leave you. And whether we're sitting here this morning in a valley, whether we're sitting here this morning on a mountaintop, whether we're sitting here this morning somewhere in between, we've got to know God will never fail us. Or forsake us. When we are at the top of the mountain, know that God is the one that got us there. When we are in the valley low, know that we are not alone. Our God is a God of the hills and valleys. 
Now, I don't know whether you like that song or not. I, I, I love it. And it's not my kind of music at all. But the message is so clear. I mean, the guy used to be in a boy band for Pete's sakes, right? He's basically the Christian Backstreet Boys. I bought his whole album. The, the ending song is going to be the, the song September that he redid. Right? Not my style at all. But his message is so clear to us that I want to share it with you. Our God is a God of the hills and valleys. No matter where we are on that spectrum, we're not alone. And so, what I want to do to end the service today, I don't want to have the band come back up. I don't want to do another song. What I want to do is I've got the lyric video to Hills and Valleys. And what I'd like us to do is for everyone to stand up and everyone to come up here close, if you can. And I'm going to say a quick prayer, and then I want to play that lyric video, and I want that lyric video to be your prayer. I want that lyric video, I want you to to let those words permeate your life. I want you to let those words get into your heart. I want you to let those words... Carry you through so when you get into a valley this week, you can go, my God is, it's a God of the hills and valleys. I can't sing like Torrin. That's okay. You can't either. Sing it, right? You feel like you've been kicked. You feel like you're down. My God is a God of the hills and valleys. You feel like you're on the top of the world. Something great has happened to you. And you go, look what I, God did in my life. Because my God is a God of the hills and valleys. So if everyone can come up here, it's okay. We won't put a camera on you. We won't make you sing. But I want you to get, and I want this to touch your life. While you guys are coming up, I want to pray real quick. Heavenly Father, we come to you today, Lord. Help us know the truth that you are a God of the hills and valleys. Help us know the truth that no matter what we're feeling today, whether we're feeling down, whether we're feeling up, whether we're somewhere else on the spectrum, know that you love us and you're with us no matter what. Lord, open our hearts and let this song touch our lives. Lord, let it speak to us in a way that only music can do. Lord, let the lyric become a truth in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey guys, this is Pastor Steve. At this point, go check out Torn Wells' single, Hills and Valleys. Let it touch your life the way it touched the congregation at Lifeline Church today. Thank you and God bless.